housing is a hotly contested issue and for a good reason. No one deserves to be homeless. This is Gabby with NextGen Real Estate and Property Management, serving Chicagoland in selling, buying, and managing properties. And if you enjoy content like this, please let me know by subscribing and hitting that like button. And as always, you can find a link below to schedule a free consultation with me. Now, this is going to be a very different type of a video compared to my other vlogs, but I believe as a real estate agent that it is something I must do. Wherever you are in the housing market, you need to get informed about the affordable housing prices. Today, I will discuss affordable housing by sharing with you some bits of the news about affordable housing in Chicago. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the fact is that we are in an affordable housing crisis. Especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, about half of Americans say that the availability of affordable housing in their local community is a major problem, up to 10% points from early 2018, according to the Pew Research Center survey conducted in October 2021. A home is one of the most essential things in human life. It is the basic human right. Just like every day, everybody needs food and clothing, and all of us also need a safe place to live. Where one lives impacts childhood development, individual self esteem and family well-being. In fact, there have been several studies linking the lack of stable affordable housing to many of America's social problems, including poverty, homelessness, educational disparities, and healthcare. So now let's dig into the recent news buzzing about affordable housing. Of most, the diverse news cycle in Chicago, I will discuss these topics. The challenges of affordable housing in Chicago, the struggles of Chicagoans to find affordable housing, the current issues with existing housing, how Chicagoans continue to fight for affordable housing, the solutions to this crisis, and the recent successful affordable housing developments in Chicago. As I previously mentioned in my other videos, living in Chicago is expensive, and housing costs are very high, especially to high property taxes. This makes the availability of affordable housing very challenging for renters and landlords alike. Nick Bloomberg reported on May 12th about the danger that workers' cottages are in amidst the redevelopment boom. Workers' cottages are simply homes of four to six rooms with a gabled roof. This iconic form of Chicago affordable housing gets demolished to make way for newer, more expensive dwellings. The Chicago's two, three, and four flats are a key source of affordable housing, but the pandemic might be changing that. The Chicago Tribune, Sarah Freistadt, on March 5th wrote in the Chicago Tribune about the struggles of landlords of affordable housing. In Chicago, units of two to four flats have always been part of affordable housing. Housing, but the pandemic is changing this dynamic. More landlords reported changing their management tactics, including increasing rents, adding fees, conducting more thorough tenant screenings, or selling their rental properties for good. Most of them are small landlords who struggle with rising inflation and high property taxes. The struggle of Chicagoans to find affordable housing. And inflation rises and home prices continue to go up with the low housing supply. Chicagoans are finding it hard to find affordable housing. The housing options for Chicagoans, undocumented seniors, and justice. On March 31st, Carlos Basteros and Laura Rodriguez Reza tell the grim story of the undocumented seniors in Chicago. Undocumented seniors frequently lack necessary paperwork to sign a lease, such as photo ID or credit histories. Foreclosure wave sweeps U.S. crest in Chicago. Courthouse News Service David Burns reported on May 20th that Chicagoans are losing their homes in higher number than any any other metro area in the country amid a national spike in residential foreclosure rates. As surprising as this increase in homelessness is, experts say it was inevitable after the epidemic eviction moratorium has ended. Despite the fact that the present foreclosure rate is the highest since the pandemic began, it is still lower than the typical pre-pandemic foreclosure rate. In the first quarter of 2022, only approximately half as many foreclosures were started as in the first quarter of 2020. Let's talk about the current issues with existing affordable housing. So let's say you do find an affordable housing, they will still struggle due to some housing poor living conditions. City Feds want Southside landlords out, the book club Chicago. On May 4th, Maxwell reported about a troubled Kenwood affordable apartment building that faces extreme backlash from the government. This came after a slew of complaints of the low-income housing towers residents regarding plumbing concerns, bug infestation, poor security, electrical repairs, and other issues. 
Three Die at Rogers Park Senior Building, Book Club Chicago. On May 16th, Joe Ward reported about how Alderman Maria Hayden of the 49th Ward called for an investigation into the death of three women from suspected heat exhaustion in Rogers Park Senior Living Complex. She asked the City Council's Housing Committee to hold hearings into the building's management and how the deaths occur. The hearing will look into what went wrong as well as make recommendations to the City Council as that law can be drafted to prevent heat-related deaths in such homes. Chicago alderman Walter Burnett softened affordable housing stance after cash influx. ABC 7 Chicago. On April 16th, the Better Government Association uncovered corruption against 27th Ward Alderman Walter Burnett. Residents claimed that their homes were swept out to make way for a gleaming new luxury high-rises that they couldn't afford. They complained that their new Canadian landlords and Burnett, a long-promoted champion of affordable housing, promised tenants new homes in the community but then failed to deliver. Chicagoans still fight for affordable housing despite all these challenges and struggles. Chicagoans are still active in fighting for more affordable housing. City pushes to address issues of vacant lots. Activists call for more affordable housing. CBS News. CBS 2's Tim McNicholas reported on April 1st about the issue of the vacant lots in the city. The city hall solicited answers through a community survey. The answers could influence how and to whom the city sells the lots it owns. Community advocates and leaders like Savannah Brown, a member of Southside Together Organization for Power, a Woodlawn-based grassroots organization focused on affordable housing, demand more affordable housing developments. South Shore residents push for stronger housing protection. WGN 9. On May 22nd, Gaynor Hall reported about how a group of Southside residents is pushing for better housing protections. The Community Benefits Agreement Coalition claims the city is not doing enough to protect people in the South Shore neighborhood, which is close to the Obama Presidential Center. The South Shore Coalition requests all city-owned vacant properties to be placed aside for affordable home development. They also want more protection for homeowners and tenants, and they want Chicago Housing Authority to be held accountable. Lincoln Square Neighborhood Rally for Affordable Housing Proposal, Book Club Chicago. Residents stage a protest in a response to a proposal for affordable housing near the Brown Line. This rally called Build Housing Now supports to plan for 51 low-cost apartments in a city-owned parking lot. The community developers led projects received preliminary approval for vital affordable housing city to tax credits in December. Officials have also stated that plans with more apartments and 18 or 19 parking places would match their requirements and allow the project to proceed. City activists clash over Woodlawn housing plan, WTTW. On February 20th, Ida Mogos reports tensions ran high as Woodland residents feel affected of the incoming Obama Presidential Center. Residents want all 52 city lots in the area to be allocated for affordable housing. They want the government to uphold the Woodland Housing Preservation Ordinance, which has passed in 2020 to protect residents from displacement while also providing additional affordable rental and housing options. Governor J.B. Pritzker signed legislation last summer to create the COVID-19 Affordable Housing Program, which would be overseen by the state and funded with $75 million from the American Rescue Plan. So let's talk about the affordable housing solutions. The affordable housing crisis is a complex issue, but the good news is there are many solutions that governments institutions and businesses are implementing to help ease the burden on Chicagoans. Affordable housing plans aims to bring down high costs of living. WGN9 Hannah Brent reports about the government's aim to assist tenants and homeowners who are struggling with growing housing costs. On May 16, the Biden administration unveiled a new affordable housing proposal. According to Bara Ramamurthy, Deputy National Economic Council Director, the focus is on boosting the quantity of available residential spaces. 
New financing alternatives and improved access to certain tax credits and loans are part of the administration's proposal, which also puts pressure on local governments to change cumbersome zoning restrictions. President Joe Biden is also urging Congress to approve legislation addressing the issue of affordable housing. Furthermore, Biden's administration is lobbying for the expansion of the Low Income Housing Tax Credit and the passage of the Neighborhood Homes Act. Efforts to reduce residential segregation by boosting affordable. WTTW officials with the Chicago Department of Housing claim that efforts endorsed by Mayor Lori Lightfoot to lessen residential segregation in Chicago by increasing the number of homes that Black and Latino residents can really afford have begun to show signs of progress. The heart of that endeavor is a rewritten legislation that compels developers who receive special authorization or a subsidy for the city to create more apartments for low and moderate income Chicagoans while also paying higher fees. Housing Commissioner Marissa Novara said the city's most visible instrument for constructing affordable housing needed to be revamped to address Chicago's heritage of systemic racism and segregation. And aside from government intervention, businesses are helping solve the affordable housing crisis through innovation. So can these factory-built houses on the west side help fix Chicago's affordable housing shortage? Book Club Chicago. East Garfield Park is slowly populating with hundreds of factory-made homes to help working-class families cope with escalating housing costs. One such modular home project is the Harrison Road Townhomes which includes 33 affordable houses. 14 of the townhomes will be duplexes. The townhomes are manufactured off-site at a factory, which reduces the cost and time it takes to construct them. One of the developers, Mike Du, said the program is meant for first-time home buyers who agree to sell the home at a restricted sale price when they move out in order to maintain it accessible for any new buyer who comes in. Affordable housing in Chicago, finish and under construction. And finally, the best part for this video is the affordable housing development in Chicago. All affordable Logan Square Apartments complex opens after years of planning. Book Club Chicago, a 100-unit affordable housing building located immediately north of the Logan Square Blue Line stops has been renamed Locking Gonzalez Parsons Apartments in honor of Chicago labor leader and activist Lucy Gonzalez Parsons. It opened on May 20th with nine tenants already moved into the apartment complex. Bickerdyke Redevelopment Corporation, a local nonprofit developer, manages this building. Half of the units will go to people making under 60% of 2022 median income, and the rest would go to the CHA voucher holders. TIF funds, tax exempt funds, and Chicago Housing Authority funds are used to support the $41 million project. Plan to convert Logan Square Church into affordable housing gets $2 million boost. Book Club Chicago. The nonprofit developer, Lucha, will receive $2 million from the federal government to redevelop an old Logan Square church into affordable housing. They will convert the almost 100-year-old Humble Park Methodist Church into 22 affordable apartments. After opting to replace the congregation, church leaders teamed up with Lucha to redevelop the church. The congregation runs 11 affordable flats at the church and church leaders want a developer to continue their efforts with affordable housing. The Humboldt Park Methodist Church project is one of several community-based projects that Jesus Garcia, who represents Illinois' 4th Congressional District, has secured federal funding for. Westside Police parking lot is slated to become affordable housing. According to Book Club Chicago, the Chicago Plan Commission approved plans for a six-story affordable housing project at a police station parking lot on the west side on January 20th. This would consist of 65 units priced at 60% of the region's median income. The apartment complex will have broad windows on each level, a landscaped roof, balconies, and terraces to emphasize views of Chicago's skyline. Living in Chicago is expensive, but that doesn't mean that affordable housing won't happen here. Chicagoans fight for affordable housing, pushing the government to take action against unsafe housing and towards better housing developments.
And the Chicago real estate market is gradually growing with affordable housing developments. So what are your thoughts about affordable housing? Are we doing enough? What do you think is going to happen in the next few years? Comment in the section below. Thanks for watching. And as always, where's your future?